tuning up a bandsaw really isn't very complicated. And whether you've got a brand new bandsaw or you've had one for a while, it's a good idea to tune it up from time to time. Uh, before I get started on actually tuning the tool, let me give you a little tour of the various parts I'm going to be talking about so you know what I'm referring to. Right up here, this is the uh, guide uh, assembly, and this red thing is the blade guard. I'm going to take this off for now just so you can see the various parts we're talking about. But of course, this would go back on before we uh, fire up the saw and make any cuts. On the guide assembly, you have two bearings, sometimes blocks. We'll see this on another saw. But you have two uh, guide bearings on either side of the blade. Those keep the blade from flexing side to side. Behind the blade is a thrust bearing. This prevents the blade from pushing too far back as you push work through during a cut. This whole assembly moves up and down by loosening a knob back here. It can rise and fall and be tightened in place. Of course, up here, these are the wheels that the blade tracks on, one above, one below. And then behind the saw is your tensioning mechanism. There'll typically be a knob up here that you can turn. And on this saw, there's also a quick release, which is very nice. It allows you to release a bulk of the tension very quickly, save you a lot of turning up here on the knob. Now, the first thing we're going to do before uh, starting the tune-up is to back off these bearings, get them away from the blade, so that as we tune things up here, the blade isn't uh, affecting those, those uh, adjustments we're making. These bearings are held in place by an Allen key. There's one here that uh, locks these in place. Then on the front of them, as you turn, you can see it's like a cam. As you turn it, it comes farther or closer from the blade. We're just going to back that out. Back that one out as well. And then I'm going to loosen this thumb screw here. And this one's nice. It has a threaded mechanism that allows you to pull the bearings back away from the blade a little bit too. Do the same thing on the thrust bearing. There's a thumb screw behind here and a threaded rod that allows me to move the uh, thrust bearing away from the blade. Same thing down below. We've got a set of bearings on either side and a thrust bearing below. I'm also going to move these. Thrust bearing is back. Loosen these. Move them back from the blade. And using the hex wrench, I'm going to loosen them and then back them away from the sides of the blade. So now as I spin the wheel, the blade has no contact whatsoever with the bearings, and the bearings won't affect what I'm going to be doing next. The next thing to do is to check that the wheels are coplanar. What that means is you want these, all four surfaces of these wheels to be in a straight line. And there's a simple way to check that. Just take any piece of scrap in your shop, make sure it has a, a straight edge jointed on it. You can also use a, a metal rule, a four-foot level. Works well if it'll fit. Put that alongside the wheels, get it as close to the bearings, the center hubs as you can. And what you're looking for is contact at four points. Bottom of the bottom wheel, top of the bottom wheel, bottom of the top wheel, and the top of the top wheel. So you should have one, two, three, four points of contact. Now here we can see there's a gap right down here. This means the wheels aren't coplanar. The blade won't track properly if the wheels aren't coplanar. So there's a simple adjustment for that. That's on the back of the saw going to hold this in place. There's a wing nut that you loosen on this knob. Turn it, and as you watch the wheel, we close that gap, and now the wheels are coplanar. Now I made that, just let me back that off and show you what uh, happens if the wheels aren't coplanar. So let's knock this out of adjustment first. Spin the wheel. And notice where the blade is tracking here. It's way towards the front of the wheel. Let me spin the wheel, tilt the wheel the other way, and you'll notice the blade moves way towards the back of the wheel. Ideally, you want the blade tracking right in the middle of that tire. And that's where the coplanar adjustment comes in. Put my straight edge back on.
Close that gap again, touching at all four points. Now when I spin the blade, we should see, I spin the wheel, we should see the blade tracking right in the center of the tire as it should. Now that I've got the blade uh, tracking properly, I want to come along and adjust my bearings back to where they should be. There's a simple little trick that gets us. You're talking about some pretty fine tolerances. You want the bearings as close as possible to the blade to get the maximum support, but you don't want them touching the blade uh, because that causes premature wear on both the bearings and the blades. So take an ordinary piece of masking tape and wrap it around the blade. This is great because it stays in place. You don't have to have a third hand to hold that while you're making adjustments. Bring the tape up into between the bearings. And I'm going to adjust the guide bearings first. Snug this up just a touch. And then rotate them over so they just touch the tape. Now if you notice that the bearing as you're uh, positioning it starts to move the blade, you've gone too far, so back off. You just want that to just kiss the tape on both sides. Once that's in position, you can tighten them down. After you tighten them down, check them again because sometimes that tightening will uh, cause the bearings to move just a bit. Easy way to check is to, well there's the check right there. I pinched the blade too tightly, so these bearings need to be backed off just a touch. It can be a bit of a trial and error process. Okay, this is exactly what I want. If you look closely, you can see that as I bring the masking tape up between the bearings, it just kisses the bearings and makes them move a little bit. That's just the gap I'm after. Then I want to adjust the forward and backward position of these thrust bearings so that the bearings are just behind the gullet of the teeth. On this saw, you loosen the thumb screw and there's a nice little micro adjuster right here that makes those adjustments very easy. Bring it up so the front edge of the bearing is just behind the deepest part of the gullet. Tighten them down. Next is the thrust bearing behind the blade. Loosen the thumb screw for it. And again, this saw has a micro adjuster. Not all do. You may just have to grab the bearing and move it back and forth. But this micro adjuster, easily bring it up so it just touches the back end of that masking tape and lock it in place. We'll do the same test here to see if that just kisses the thrust bearing so it turns it as the tape goes by but not when the tape is passed. That's the top bearings. You have the same adjustment down below the table. There are guide bearings and a thrust bearing down here so you make those same adjustments down here. Good, that's uh, adjusted just like the top ones where the bearings just kiss that tape as it goes through. Now, adjusting bearings like this with an Allen key can be a little bit tedious. Other saws have guide blocks on them. I find these much easier to adjust. Here you simply loosen a thumb screw so that the blocks move freely. Then position the tape in between them. Just give them a gentle squeeze so the blocks are up against the tape. Tighten the thumb screws. Then check that the tape moves in between the blocks. That's all the time that takes. Very nice little system. Now the final adjustment to make is to check that the table is square to the blade. And you want to check that in two directions. I'm going to take this tape off of here since we're done adjusting the bearings. First direction you want to check is the side of the blade is square to the table. This is off just a little bit. Very easy adjustment to make. There are two hand screws down here that you loosen and allows the blade, or it allows the table to tilt just a bit. So loosen those up, bring the table up so it's perfectly square, and once it is, tighten those hand wheels and table set to 90. Once you've done that, it's also a good idea to set the stop for 90, so if you have to take the table off of 90, you can easily bring it back automatically. That's just a matter of taking this bolt that extends from the trunnion and touches the t underside of the table, raising it up so it touches the table, and then tightening this screw to hold its position, or tightening this nut to hold its position. That takes care of the side-to-side -side square. Final check is, is the blade square from the back of the blade to the table? And this one is also off just a little bit. There's no adjustment built into the saw for this, but it's an easy fix nonetheless. Again, down below the table here, 
There's a set of bolts that hold the trunnion into the table. Loosen those up and then insert some shims between the table and the trunnion. You can use brass shim stock for this. You can cut your own out of uh, old pop cans. Or even if you need micro adjustments, use a couple layers of masking tape. Once those are in place, tighten the bolt back up. Check your square. And that's exactly where we want to be. If you take the time to go through your saw like this and tune it up, I think you're going to see a marked improvement in your results.